When it comes to beloved British beers, you can't go wrong with an ESB or extra special bitter. It combines a rich caramel sweetness with a fresh hoppy backbone to create a beautifully balanced and easy drinking beer. We're going to brew one up on an absolutely no prep brew day so we can see exactly how long this all takes. So let's get started. Hi, I'm Martin Keane. I'm taking the homebrew challenge to brew 99 beers in 99 weeks. Today I am brewing an ESB. It's categorized actually by the BJCP guidelines as a strong bitter, which was a change made in 2015, I believe because Fuller's own the ESB trademark. But regardless of all that, we're brewing an ESB. Now, today's brew is a no prep brew day. And what I mean by that is normally before I start brewing, I've done a little bit of preparation ahead of time. Now, sometimes I've split a brew day across multiple days. So it's 9 p.m. Monday night. Let's get started by measuring out some ingredients. But typically with every brew day, I'll do a little bit of prep up front. So normally I will create a yeast starter a few days ahead of brew day. And then the night before brew day, I will measure out all my ingredients and get the water in my kettle. Today, I ain't done none of that. This is no prep whatsoever, but it does give us the opportunity then to really see how long a brew day is gonna take end to end using my claw hammer supply system. So let's, uh, let's get the timer running again. And the first task is to start heating up some water right here in my kettle. I don't go crazy with uh, the water salts, but I just try to make sure that I have everything balanced that I need for this. So I'm using calcium chloride, gypsum and epsom salt. I'm gonna add this into the water along with a bit of lactic acid to get the pH where I want it to be for the mash. With the hoses on and the water salts added, let's get this sucker heated up. We're looking to brew a beer here of a original gravity of 1059, which is gonna give a beer of about 5.8%. Now to get there, let's take a look at the ingredients we're going to use. This is the third of the British bitters that I've been brewing and they have all consisted of three ingredients in the grist. The first two of which are always the same and that's gonna be the case with this beer as well. So the main base malt that I'm using is Maris Otter and I'm using 87% of that. The second malt that's been common to all of these beers, that is Crystal 80. And in this beer, I'm going to use 9% of Crystal 80. As for the final ingredient, when I did the Ordinary Bitter, I used Victory Malt for that kind of bready toastiness that we can get from that. For the Best Bitter, I changed that to Pale Chocolate Malt just to add a little bit more of a sort of a dark roasty flavor to that beer. For this one, for the ESB, the third ingredient is going to be English brown malt, 4% of that. And that's really to bring in some of those wonderful properties you get from English brown malt of that just sort of toasty, bready characteristic. And I think that will come through in the final beer. Sunny day, take me down to Cobra Lake, take me back to yesterday, cause that's where I belong. My goodness, all this stuffing around, getting the ingredients done and milled, reminds me why I try to do this ahead of time. We are now 42 minutes into brew day already. The water has been at strike temperature for quite a while. So let's get this in and start the mash. We're going to do a 60 minute mash, uh, looking to get to a pre-boil gravity of 1039. Take me back to 
Well, I've been mashing for 45 minutes now and I'm already at my expected pre-boil gravity, so I'm just gonna stop the mash there. Um, I am going to set this to 168 Fahrenheit for a quick mash out. That's a step I don't always do, but given the mash finished early, I figure why not? Um, and then I'll bring it up to boil. Now, an ESB can be pretty high in IBUs. The star guidelines allow up to 50 IBU. I'm going to go with 45, and the way I'm going to do that is a combination of Fuggle Hops and East Kent Golding. So, Fuggle Hops are my bittering hops. These are going in at 60 minutes. Um, this should give me about 33 IBU of bitterness. Uh, it, is an ounce uh, based on the, the batch size that I'm doing. Flavor and aroma then is gonna come from East Kent Golding. I split a one ounce bag. So I'm expecting to get 11 IBU out of this, which I'm gonna put in after 20 minutes. And then at flame out, I will add the remainder of my East Kent Golding hops. And this is approaching boiling now, so we're ready to get started. And we're about two hours in. I am done with the boil, so just add in my last little batch of East Kent Golding, kill the heat, and now I'm going to start the cooling process, uh, which for me is using this plate chiller. So first of all, just to sanitize the plate chiller, while this is still super hot, I'm going to recirculate. And because this is such a small batch, it really chills this stuff down quickly. I want to get on a 68. So uh, let's, let's see how long it takes to get to 68. Well, that's how long it took. About eight minutes to cool this down. Now I mentioned that I didn't make a yeast starter. In fact, all I've got is a, a little bit left over from a big yeast starter that I made uh, a few weeks ago of London Ale 3 yeast. This is the yeast I want to use, but don't have a whole lot of it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a Vitality starter. So I have stolen about one liter of the wort and I'm going to put the yeast into here and run it for a few hours and hopefully that will get the yeast started. And at that point then I will add it into the bigger batch. And the idea being here, we don't want to shock the yeast with just giving it this glorious garden of sugar everywhere. We're going to uh, just give it a small amount first, get it started and then add it into the batch. So the rest of the beer is now in the fermenter and then I have my little um, Vitality starter, which I'm just gonna run for a few hours and then pour this all in. Now I do still have some cleanup to do and I'm gonna cover cleanup separately in another video, but I'm basically done with my brew. How long did it take to go from having nothing prepared to having at least wort in a fermenter? Well, that's how long, about three and a half hours. So I'm gonna come back in a couple of hours and add that Vitality Starter in, put the beer in my fermentation chamber, then I'm done. Just a case of uh, waiting a few weeks for the tasting. So we have reached the thrilling conclusion of the English Bitters Trilogy. Okay. Now we've moved on to extra special bitter. So we started with Ordinary Bitter, which was the lightest of the beers. Then we moved on to Best Bitter, which is a bit stronger. And then this one is 5.4%, so it's a, a point stronger still. Ooh. Yeah, I know, it's still not very <laughs> strong, but as, as far as English drinks go, it's a little higher. Um, so far, what has been your favorite, uh, Ordinary Bitter or Best Bitter? I think Best Bitter. Was yeah. my favorite. It actually yeah. had a t like more of a taste to it than yeah. the ordinary. Yeah, I really, really like the best bitter. <laughs> so, this is a beer style though that I very much enjoy. ESB, have you had any ESBs? I have. I can't remember any of like the breweries apart from Fuller's ESB, right? 
Uh, yeah, okay, follows are then Fortnite. Fortnite, right. Fortnite. So, so our local brewery here does a, a really good ESB. Yeah. So this beer's got a lot to live up to. So let's take a look at the colouring first of all. Quite amber. Uh, it's a lot paler than the um, the last one. The best bitter, the yes. The best bitter, yeah. So for aroma, let's see what we get with that. Oh, and to me this does smell a good bit different from the from the best bitter. It smells like toast. Yeah, it's very, very bready, uh, brown bready, I think. Yeah, it smells like, like yeah, brown bread that's been in a toaster on like setting five. <laughs> <laughs> Very precise description. All right, let's go for the taste. To me, it tastes very much like it smells. It's um, a very brown bready kind of flavor to it that I'm getting. Yeah, that's like level seven taste-wise on the toaster scale. <laughs> <laughs> it smelled like a five, it tastes like a seven. Well, I'm sorry, this being the end, I think we have to do this again. So, uh, I'm really chuffed how well these British bitters have come off. Cheers. Bob's your uncle.